Hi everyone and a warm welcome to QuantPy. In this video we will derive the Black-Scholes formula using the change of probability measure technique. And by the end of this video we hope to convey to you that it's not rocket science. You will recall in the Black-Scholes model the stock price has the following dynamics under risk neutral measure. The solution to which is we have solved this differential at least twice in the Ito's differential of elementary functions video and in the geometric Brownian video. Now, the price of a call option under the risk neutral measure is simply the discounted expected value of its payoff, where the indicator function takes the value of 1 if the stock price at maturity is higher than the strike price and 0 otherwise. You are far more likely to have seen this equation in terms of the maximum function. Both reflect the fact that a call option only pays when the stock price is higher than the strike. The indicator function makes it easy to split this payoff into the difference of two terms. Interchanging the expectation and the difference and taking the known quantities out of the operator, we get. Now let's evaluate these expressions. The second expression is more straightforward, so let's tackle it first as a warm up. The mindset here is that the expected value of the indicator function is the same thing as the probability of the indicated event. So we get. Substituting the expression for the terminal stock price, we get. Taking log of both sides, we get. Isolating the Brownian motion on the left hand side, we get. We know the Brownian is normally distributed with mean zero and variance equal to the length of the interval. So if we divide it by the square root of time to maturity, we obtain a nice standard normal. Now that we have the standard normal under our belt, let's use its distribution function to calculate the probability. Notice, we multiply the term by minus one. This is because the probability of a standard normal is symmetric about zero. So the probability of a standard normal being higher than a certain value is the same as the probability of the standard normal being lower than the negative of that value. And this is the famous D2 term of our Black-Scholes formula. Yay! Now let's evaluate the first term. We've got this product of two terms inside the expectation which does not bode well, but worry not, because the change of measure technique is our knight in shining armour here. First, let's substitute the expression for the terminal stock price, leaving the indicator function as it is. Splitting the exponential term, we get. Taking the stock price and the first exponential out of the expectation, we find that the terms with r times big T cancel each other, so we get. Now, let's cast our memory back to the Cameron Martin Gersonov theorem. And afterwards, let's see what it can do for the terminology we have at hand. The Cameron Martin Gersonov theorem tells us that if B tilde is a Brownian under the probability measure Q, and we shift the process by Y, then the shifted process will be a Brownian motion under a measure Q prime and is identifiable through its density or its derivative with respect to the old measure. If we look at the problem at hand through the cameron martin gasanov theorem magnifying glass, we notice that these exponential terms are similar to the radon negadim. Very handy. So we replace it with the derivative to get and, which is nothing but the expected value of the indicator function but under the new measure. You have guessed it, we will use the same approach we have used in the previous derivation, but will substitute the dynamics of the stock price under the new measure first, which we derive easily by substituting the expressions relating to the old Brownian with those of the new Brownian. Combining the sigma terms, we get. We are in the home straight now. We just repeat the procedure we used earlier on, but use the new dynamics of the stock price. As before, the expected value of the indicator function is the same as the probability of the indicator event, so we get. 
substituting the expression for the terminal stop price, we get taking log of both sides, we get isolating the Brownian motion on the left hand side and dividing by the square root of time, we get the probability of our standard normal. And making use of the symmetric property of the standard normal, we get the formula. Yes, yes, I can almost hear you out there. It is indeed the famous D1 term of the Black Scholes formula. Nice guess. Before we get carried away, let's collect the results quickly. We hope you enjoyed this video and we look forward to seeing you in the next.